Hello everybody, it's Joy from Craft Nomad. So what as we say here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It's Thursday, November 22nd, 2017. And as you can see, I'm wearing my very fashionable new high-tech mask for the pollution. It does seem to really help. I do feel better. I'm going to take it off now though because I'm inside and I don't need it inside but uh, I did want to give you a short report on what the pollution is like now. Um, it continues to be in the red zone which is uh, when it's over a hundred it can do damage to your health. I'm not saying if you're visiting here that it's going to be a problem but because I live here I feel that I really should be um, cautious about it and uh, this new mask has the filter that uh, this will filter out all of the small particles that are very dangerous for inhaling because your body can't uh, filter them out and so they just go in your lungs and eventually you have damage just as um, it can be as bad as smoker so um, that's that. It has been in the purple zone three or four days in the last week, which uh, not for a long time, but that's a little bit worrisome. And my thought is it's possible that one of the um, field burnings got out of control and maybe uh, there's a forest fire or something. Um, it generally goes on through April until Songkran, and then that's a big holiday supposed to be three days in April from the 13th to the 15th this year but it generally goes for about five days just because lots of tourists come to Chiang Mai for this holiday and um, so they they usually try to stop the field burning and plus everybody just stops working during that time so there's not as much but then it can start up again after Songkran but most of the field burning should be done by now because they started really early. So that is the pollution report. Um, let's see. I didn't tell you where you can find me. I'm Craft Nomad on Facebook. If you found me on YouTube, you know that I'm uh, Craft Nomad. Um, that's the best way, place to watch the video. But you can go on my website, which is also called Craft Nomad. And there's a link there every time I uh, post um, a new podcast. Uh, Instagram is Silver Fox Gray, silverfox.gray. And um, that's it for where you can find me. You can always put uh, comments in YouTube. Uh, I find that if I'm watching a podcast, it's easier just to put the comments in YouTube because. I can put the comments in right there while I'm watching it, uh, but you're more than welcome to put comments in the website, and particularly if it's something that you think uh, you would like to, information you would like to post that uh, you want people to see and you want it to kind of stay there, then um, the website is the best place to do it. Uh, and you can always go to the Facebook site. Instagram, um, I will post pictures every once in a while. Just be aware that on Instagram, the pictures just go directly from the camera um, to Instagram. So they're not edited. I try to edit the pictures that I put here, but I'm far from being an expert. Um, I have some interesting personal news, so I'll just kind of uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, this week there's no um, works in progress for crafts. It's just been, the weather's been bad. I haven't had a lot of energy and um, I just, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um, but here's what's happening in my life. Um, I had the Chiang Mai Fiber Arts uh, craft group on Facebook. And that was up for about a year, and I did have some other international members. A couple of them really were the only ones that showed up to meetings because I really wanted to have 
like a knit night or something. But uh, I think a year is enough time to, to uh, give it a chance. And the biggest thing was that the few people that joined had a really different idea about um, what they wanted to, the group to be from what I wanted it to be. And so um, after the last meeting in, uh, in February, I just decided uh, to take it down. And that way, if they want to have a group that um, meets and they're doing all kinds of different things that I'm not really interested in, there seem to be some issues with what is fiber arts. Um, you know, that's great. They, there's another website. If you're interested in lots and lots of different kinds of crafts, um, there is a Facebook page for that, a Chiang Mai um, Hobbies and Crafts, I think she calls it. Um, my idea was much more focused. And um, so that will give me more time because I, did, I tried to prepare for that. Um, I finished the first edit of a novel that I wrote during uh, NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo is National uh, Novel Writing Month. Uh, it's a nationwide and international wide actually um, event where in November, uh, you start on the 1st of November and you try to write a novel of a certain length by the end of the month. That's the first draft, though. So then you, you're probably going to spend the rest of the year really um, doing a lot of editing and organizing and getting it really fixed up so that you can either publish it yourself or present it to an editor um, to try to get it published. So there'll be news on that every once in a while. But I was really happy to get that first edit done because... Um, that took a long time. Um, when you do a first draft, you just want to get all the ideas down as fast as you possibly can. And I had a rough idea when I started, um, and everything went well until about halfway through. And I realized that there were a lot more things that I wanted to say. And but I didn't want to slow down and take the time to integrate them into the rest of the novel at that time. So I had two parts to my novel. Anyway, that's the news about that. Um, I also was going to a writer's group every Wednesday, and it was such a wonderful group. Very small. There were just four of us who attended regularly, uh, and we would read a piece of our work every week. And it was not a class, it was not a workshop or anything like that. It was just four people who were serious about their writing and wanted to share it with other people. Because if you write, you really need somebody who's a sounding board. And for a lot of people, it's a spouse or other close um, person that they really trust their judgment or just trust that they can get a reaction and, um, you know, not just criticism. And so it was really great for that because we had three people and uh, nobody ever really criticized other people, but they would definitely say, that was really great or that made me feel like I was really there. So you would know when you really had hit it. And uh, sadly, that group, um, one of the pe actually two of the people moved away and the other person is having health problems. So that group is no more. So now I have no excuses for <laughs> taking so long to do the next episode. Uh, I will try to be more diligent about that. Uh, but I do need to, um, be involved in the community. Otherwise, after a while, I'm not going to have things to write about. I can only go to uh, tourist sites alone so much. Uh, I, I think it's really, it's important to have interaction with other people. Uh, one of the groups that I'm interested in and I would love to tell you about is called Gate Theater. And it's the only English language uh, live theater group 
in the Chiang Mai area, and they often go to places like Chiang Ra as well um, with their shows. So if you're visiting in this area and you like live theater, um, be sure and look that up, and I'll, I'll put the information in the notes because um, it's all volunteer group, and uh, it's just, I feel that it's so wonderful that they have that here. And I may be getting involved with that, but I won't say anything more about it right now because I don't know in what capacity I'll get involved. Uh, I have to wait and see, talk to the artistic director and uh, some of the, there are actually three directors that I know of uh, with the group and see where I fit in. So, but that will be really fun. Uh, so now to um, the trip, I mentioned that I went to a uh, tribal museum and I have pictures for you and uh, this time there, some of them are labeled, but the problem that I had was um, it's a beautiful, fairly new museum and it's really so nice that they have it because the Hill Tribe people um, live in those mountains that border, uh, they border uh, Thailand uh, along Laos, Cambodia, and Burma. And these people have been kind of traveling in and out historically among these countries and also from uh, Vietnam. But a lot of them originated in China. So um, in the past they've been partially nomadic people and um, a lot of times people don't know anything about them. I certainly didn't know anything about that tradition. So it's a really important part of Thai culture. Uh, generally they say there are 10 tribes. Um, I bought a book uh, about it because the museum had no pamphlets, no books, and uh, the only things that were labeled inside the museum were mostly in Thai. They did have recordings in English, which was great. You know, uh, you could go to each area and listen to a recording. But then the problem is when you walk away, you're not going to remember all that. So uh, I did try to do some research and it took me a while to fo excuse me, find a bookstore that had the type of books I was looking for. Um, a lot of the English books are only tourist books, but there is one bookstore and I will put a link to that for you also in the notes uh, because it, it's the only one that really has a lot of books about Thai culture and about its history and, and all of the kinds of things that you would want to know if you really want to learn about the country. Um, the, they had several books on the Hill Tribes and there were a couple that were uh, about the textiles, but um, I didn't buy a book just about textiles simply because the, those books were very academic. And uh, so what I chose to do was get a book that just introduces the tribes and it has a little bit about their lifestyle and a little about the costume. So some of the um, pictures, I still was not able to identify the tribe because this book is not only on costume. And um, it's called The Hill Tribes Living in Thailand by Emmanuel Perve. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Um, and from that name, I don't know if Emmanuel is a man's name or a woman's name, but I'm guessing it's a man. And he didn't really have a lot about the costumes. It was very uneven. Some of the uh, pictures, this is a wonderful picture, and it was a really good choice for, um, for the uh, cover. But um, not all of the tribes, there weren't good pictures in every one, and the descriptions were not 
they were clear in some parts and some parts not so clear. What was the distinction of um, the between the different hill tribe dress and also very little information about the male costumes and uh, so I put as much uh, information as I could on the pictures that I have and hopefully as I live here longer I'll learn a little bit more each time and so every once in a while I'll, I'll do something about textiles or about um, the hill tribe uh, costumes. Um, the Thai people, uh, it's mainly, um, they mainly focus on the silk, and this is not something that I'm going, probably going to get into because it's something that uh, I can't afford to collect it, and if I had silk garments, I would have no place to wear them. Um, but the Hill Tribe uh, costumes are unique, but they're also, some of them are quite wearable. And so something like that with a pair of jeans, you could really, um, you could wear it. And those, those types of clothing are available uh, in many places in Northern Thailand. So. Hey, let's talk about crafting again. As I said, I don't have any new works in progress. But you might have noticed that I'm wearing something that's a handmade item. This is a little jacket that I made a while back and it's crocheted uh, in just regular cotton uh, thread, um, very lightweight thread. And it's um, just, I made it slightly longer than bolero length because for me that works better. Um, it has the kimono sleeves, and there is a seam down the back, and it's all crocheted. So I'm going to take it off so that you can see um, the structure, and then I'm going to show you the pattern book. So there are three seams. There are shoulder seams, which um, Let's see if I can get it. There we go. That's what the shoulder seams look like. So it has that nice little lacy um, look on the edges. And then uh, there's no underarm seam. Then there is a seam right here that's a chain stitch. So on the inside, um, It's just a chain stitch that's holding it together. So let me see if if I hold it back, maybe you can see the shape when it's not on the body. So this is the shape. Now, if you remember the book from last week, you might recognize this photo was on the book this photo right here the pink one that was on the cover of the book that I showed you last week so again this is a Korean pattern book it's a Korean pattern book no English but you can still do it because, like all the Asian patterns, it has is the shape of the two parts. You only make two parts, and it's the way you fold them that gives it this shape. And then you have the bigger chart here, so if you know your crochet symbols, you can just follow this chart and you don't have to really follow any directions. Um, and here's, here's a close-up of, the, of their design. So even though I'm not too productive right now, I have been and I hope to be again. One of the things I have to do is figure out where I can get good quality um, uh, supplies. 
So I have the hemp thread, and that's fine for little hobby things. And uh, the acrylic, even if I decide to make toys, you know, even with acrylic, there, there's really good acrylic, and then there's kind of yucky acrylic, and most of the acrylic here is kind of yucky. So I may have to find some place where I can order online from Bangkok or something. So if you live in Bangkok, or in that any uh, another area of uh, Thailand, and you know of a place that I can order uh, uh, crochet supplies online, I would love to find um, mercerized cottons. Really, always find uh, threads. I I don't like to work with the bigger ones because I'm gonna do lightweight, lazy things. Uh, blend of linen and cotton, or some silk blends, but no wool it's just too it's too hot and it's it would be imported um so if i can get something where it doesn't have to be imported i can actually afford to do it but ordering from europe or the u.s is going to be impossible because uh it costs more than 50 percent of the cost of the item to ship it here. So if you spend a hundred dollars, it's going to cost you a hundred and sixty to get it here. So that's, it's, that's not doable, but, uh, I'm sure there's a way. And, uh, I wanted to also talk about doing a virtual knit night. So, um, if you're interested in doing a virtual knit night, I think we can do up to six people on hangouts. Uh, on YouTube, we can also do a live feed, and then um, I know you can do up to three people on the live feed, and as many people as want to can go online and um, on the live feed, and they can ask questions and uh, send text messages during the live feed. So I would love to do something like that because... Uh, I don't have my craft group, and uh, I want to interact with more people. And also, I think that the the website would really be much better if uh, I had partners. I'm not in a position, as I said before, to do interviews right now. I just I feel like um, this is way too early in uh, my uh, podcasting career to be asking people to do interviews. So um, if you're interested at all, please contact me. I don't care what country you're from. As long as you speak English enough that I can understand you, you don't have to. I don't care what your accent is. I'm pretty good with understanding accents. Just that um, you are interested in fiber arts and you have some things you want to talk about and that we can understand each other, it would be great. Or let's just do a knit night and get together. It would be great to get some people from different countries together and do a knit night and see what all the people from different countries are doing because like in South America right now, it's fall. And when we're doing summer things, a lot of us are doing summer things. I'll be doing them all year round. But... <laughs> When you're doing winter things in the Northern Hemisphere, in South America, they're going to be doing summer things. So that would be fun. That's all the rambling I'm going to do for right now. So I'm going to sign off and happy crafting. See you again soon. Have a great two weeks. Bye-bye.